What's going on there folks? Good evening. The Earthmaster here on the live stream uh, with an update video on this Tuesday evening, February 8th, 2022, about uh, 6.16 p.m. California time out here along the west coast and the latest earthquake out there, a 2.6 earthquake into the west coast area. Looks like California region, Southern California. Go ahead and jump into it. We have seen a little bit of activity ramping up here along the west coast uh, over the last 24 hours movement up and down the state including that uh, latest earthquake there 2.6 around the little lake area right around the ridgecrest region of course 2019 had that july 4th july 5th sequence of earthquakes here rather large earthquakes striking this region aftershock activity continuing to this date uh, 2.7 at 1.7 kilometers also some further movement kicking up along the eastern part of the sierra nevada uh, there's a little bit of uh, uptick compared to the last couple days where we've seen uh, just a little, a little bit of slowdown in movement along the eastern crest. Seen that activity return, including out here in Nevada across the Candelaria Hills and this little separate fault system up here. Uh, kind of showing some movement as well within the last 24 hours. 2.9, the largest cluster. Uh, actually, actually, let's see what this is here. Hold on. 2.9 is way down there. I know we had something similar to that. Let's see what we got. Uh, yeah. Could have swore maybe that was yesterday. Either way, activity general, generally ramping up here in the region of the west coast and the intermountain uh, regions as well. Uh, movement down, where was that 2.9 at? I believe it was this one right here near Deep Springs area uh, in the California region, Eureka Valley. If I recall, we've seen a little bit of swarming movement here directly in this location. Uh, I think it was within the last 30 days or so. Let's go ahead and check that out. Uh, yep, roughly within the same area. We've seen a little bit of activity kick up here. Could have swore there was more than that. Uh, but then again, maybe not. Uh, either way, it's definitely seen some activity in an, uh, in a region where we normally don't see too much movement uh, kicking up there around the Eureka Valley area. But there's definitely some fault systems all over the place. Uh, there's many fault systems all over the place here in California. And there's a numerous hundreds and hundreds of them. A uh, little bit of activity out here around the White Wolf Fault Zone outside of Bakersfield, 1.2. And some activity down in the southern part of the state. No significant movement, although a little bit of activity up here in the Los Angeles region with 2.6 near the Silver Lake area at 8 kilometers below the surface and a little bit more shallow earthquake down uh, to the southwest. Uh, some movement along the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault. The Bay Area looks pretty quiet, though, today. Not seeing any activity on the Calaveras or Hayward Fault Systems or the uh, uh, San Andreas Fault System in that area. Pretty quiet. Uh, movement kicking up, though, in a big way out here around the Clear Lake area, just the west of the Cobb Mountain region. Doing a little bit of research on this activity here on the hot spot uh, volcanic field out here, the Clear Lake Volcanic Field. Uh, the hydrothermal pumping, hydrothermal uh, power plant operation is out here that kind of uh, uses uh, steam to generate power. And I'm thinking about going down there, uh, seeing if I can't get to this region, maybe to, maybe to talk to someone out there, see if uh, I can get to maybe one of their spokesperson, right? See if they uh, can tell me about what's going on with the little increase in movement out there uh, with all this earthquake activity. 42 earthquakes um, from the... Uh, from the operations out there in the Cobb Mountain region. See, I'm not for sure if I can get out there. I know there's uh, I know there's some roads out here that do uh, come across here, but I'll have to check it out. Either way, it'd be cool to get out there and see if I can talk to someone uh, and see a little bit. Maybe maybe they'll give me a tour of the plant. Uh, that would be pretty cool. Either way, I'll be out there uh, very very soon checking out the operations there. So if you guys uh, are want to know more about it we'll definitely see if we can find something about it here because it seems like it's on the increase 43 earthquakes just today over the last seven days a pretty good increase about 304 earthquakes here around the uh, clear lake volcanic field the Cobb mountain area of course mount kanakdai sits up here it's a beautiful volcanic feature when you're traveling highway 20 here through uh the nice area lucerne and the clear lake oaks area it's a very dominant feature of a uh, volcano, and there's houses all up and down these, uh, up and down this area. 
I seen him. Let me see if we can bring up the uh, satellite view. A little bit harder to tell on the mountains here, but there's definitely houses built up all over at the base of this volcano, which is still active uh, in terms of showing potential activity. It's not completely dead. It's not completely drained. It's not completely blocked off. Otherwise, we would not be having this heating and the gases and the steam and everything else that's going on here uh, within the vicinity of the Clear Lake volcanic field. So uh, definitely, uh, I want to get down there. I'm going to go check it out here pretty soon. So I'm gonna, I keep, actually, I talked about it last year, but I think I'm going to do it here really soon. That's got to be a, uh, it's going to be a, a good trip down there. Only about an hour and a half, two hours away from where I live, so it's not that big of a drive. Uh, Northern California, pretty quiet, folks. A little bit of movement up here south of Medford into the Siskiyou Mountains, 1.6 near Ashland, Oregon, at 7.8 kilometers. Uh, pretty shallow earthquake there in the region. The Cascadia looks pretty quiet for now. Uh, movement up and down the Cascades as far as volcanic activity. Just a couple small quakes around Mount Hood, Mount St. Helens, Mount Rainier. All showing a little bit of activity in the microquake department here today. Uh, just kind of something, I mean, very, very small earthquake activity, so there's nothing significant going on, but uh, activity nonetheless, right? Uh, Marble Mount, Washington, a 1.6, and a little query activity out here west of Victoria. Point, uh, what do we got? Negative 0.3, so pretty uh, at the surface there. We did have some further movement into Canada. Let's go ahead and check this out here real quick on the Earthquakes Canada map. I know I've seen something pop up here. There we go. That's right. Seen a uh, earthquake out there in this region. 4.2 around the Grand, uh, Grand Prairie area. Um, Alberta region. A little bit of a stronger size earthquake in that area. Of course, Canada has been pretty quiet here over the last, uh, I'd say, last few days or so. Uh, so that's kind of a little shaker out there. See if I can get some more info on this earthquake. Uh, Earthquakes Canada doesn't show too much in the way of uh, report felt or uh, did you fill it reports. And I'm not seeing anything listed on here on the map as uh, far as their recent significant earthquake reports at the moment. Uh, but it's definitely there. I'd say a 4.2 is somewhat of a uh, larger quake for this region. It was that uh, occurred just a little bit ago, a little short time ago. Not showing up on the USGS map, even though it's above 4.0 threshold. I don't know about the EMSC. Uh, we'll go ahead and check this out here real quick on the EMSC model. And uh, see if these guys are reporting it. It looks like, uh, yeah, it looks like the EMSC definitely reporting that earthquake activity up there in the Alberta region. 4.2 in the red circle there just a short time ago. Uh, let's see what else we got here on the EMSC model. Some movement around the uh, Taiwan area. Western side of the Philippine plate looks like and some activity down in the New Zealand area. I'm going to click in here real quick on a closer view of the EMSC model and uh, see if these guys are reporting... Uh, any significant type of swarming activity. New Zealand definitely shown some threes like we have been watching in this region uh, over the last few days or so. Also a pretty good cluster of quakes off the Middle America Trench and the Peru Chile Trench. But uh, this place is always moving. The earthquake activity is always uh, happening for the most part in these plates, these very active, highly accumulated stress zones. Although something that hasn't been moving is up here in Japan. Uh, on the uh, Japan and the uh, Kuro Kamchaka Trench. It's just been all too quiet still in that region of the world. Uh, let's go back here to the USGS map. We'll take a look at uh, some other features and whatnot going on here on the uh, all magnitudes area. There's movement all throughout Southern California. Looking pretty, uh, yeah, it's looking pretty active. More filled in, if you will. I think that that's the word I'm looking for. All these fault systems showing a little bit of activity there. Uh, throughout the region, including some activity that we haven't seen up here before, or at least in quite a while, along the, just off the uh, southern section of the San Andreas Fault. Some microquakes on the North American side of the plate boundary here. I uh, see that little swarming of activity here on just on the east side. 
Nothing significant, but uh, definitely some movement that uh, kind of take note of when it does happen. Some activity stretching up into the Yellowstone area where we've seen a little bit of swarming take place here this morning. Uh, so far, these guys only showing eight earthquakes on the map at the uh, northern end of the Lake Yellowstone area. It looks like right around the Pelican Valley uh, region. But uh, there's definitely a lot more. Let's go ahead and check out the uh, Yellowstone map here real quick, and I'll show you guys what I'm kind of talking about here. A lot more than eight earthquakes shown up here on the map. We'll go ahead and zoom into the uh, area of interest when it comes to the... Uh, epicenter region in Yellowstone. I mean, we can count these. There's definitely a lot more than eight on this area. This is at 2 point, uh, I believe they had a 2.6 there. So all these other earthquakes a little bit on the smaller side, but earthquakes nonetheless. And uh, there's definitely probably a good 15 or so if you include all these other ones on the little bit smaller side. But uh, definitely some activity that kicked up there earlier this morning. Since then, looks like things have kind of died off in the Yellowstone area. Like I say, these sw these swarms, they kind of kick up and uh, come and go as they please. Sometimes it's uh, a couple weeks. Sometimes it's a couple months. I remember, uh, when was it, 2019? Maybe 2018, I think, um, when we seen that. Uh, it was like a three-month-long swarm towards the end of summer there at Yellowstone National Park. If I remember right, it was around the Maple Creek area in the northwestern part of the uh, park. And uh, it was crazy watching that day in, day out. Uh, just a significant amount of earthquakes taking place there. So they do kick up, they do kick off, and they do just come and go as they please. This one looks like it just wanted to say hi and uh, just dropped out. Because uh, looking at uh, pretty quiet activity now there at Yellowstone. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Some movement in the Oklahoma area, north of Enid, right? Medford area. Also some movement out here around the New Madrid zone. A couple of small microquakes, a 1.5 and a 1.6. Shaking things up a little bit out there along the New Madrid zone, which is still very much alive and well. Puerto Rico area, eh, kind of kicking down a little bit in the activity. Not as significant as we had seen over the last week. Still seeing some swarming along the southwestern edge of Puerto Rico and a little bit around the Mono Passage area. South America, we had seen uh, quite a few threes kick off here along the uh, Peru Chile Trench on the EMSC model. USGS showing 4.0 and above, only shows one earthquake there at a 4.5 into the Peru Chile Trench at 38.5 kilometers. And of course, this activity last night and earlier this morning throughout the uh, Mid Atlantic Ridge and the Antarctica Plate down here, South, South Atlantic Ocean, showed some uh, movement as well. Uh, what else we got here? Let's go ahead and zoom in to the uh, East China Sea region. Seeing a little bit of swarming kick up here. Just off the plate boundary here. A couple fives kicking off right next to each other. Also seen a 5.0 here in the Russia area along this plate region. Well inland, well away from the uh, Japan Trench and the Kurokamachaka Trench. But uh, some activity definitely kicking up uh, well west of the region. Hawaii. Let's go ahead and zoom in there to these guys. And, uh, of course, southeast flank pretty active. Some continued movement around the Mauna Loa area as well. Still kind of watching this, waiting to see what she wants to do. Uh, we'll, we'll just uh, see what happens there, right? Alaska as well. Uh, some activity kicking up around the Aleutian Trench area and up into the Cook Inlet. Pretty extensive amount of earthquakes here within this region. Nothing significant, but just... Uh, Quite a few twos and ones scattered out all over the place uh, in that area of the uh, Cook Inlet region. Trimmer activity, I don't believe we had any. Uh, we will check that out real quick. It looks like we've returned to zero epicenters of trimmer along the uh, Cascadia subduction zone for now. Pretty uh, quiet, uh, has been pretty quiet. Uh, what do we have, like 100 or 200 uh, epicenters a couple days ago within this region? But uh, overall, things just kind of mellow at the moment still in the Cascadia zone. Let's go ahead and check out the uh, solar ham site real quick, the solar weather activity. Looks like they're calling for a little bit of amplified movement here, or uh, amplified activity on the three-day geomagnetic forecast, February 10th and February 11th with the G1 class storm. 
uh, 75 and 60 percent chance of higher latitude views on the auroras coming up here in the next few nights so we'll watch that very closely and sea flare activity uh, or at least the uh, flare threat remains somewhat elevated at least for a 15 percent chance of a sea flare they did have a little flare pop up here into the upper sea range earlier but overall nothing significant kicking up here uh, but we will look forward to that uh, CME that's coming here. Well, that's actually heading away from the Earth. That's kind of a slow-moving one that kicked off uh, earlier from a prominence there, a large one. But it uh, looks like a geomagnetic forecast to include the possibility of a minor G1 storming beginning late on February 9th when the CME is expected to pass Earth. So I'll we'll look forward to that. Going to jump off here, folks, and uh, try to still try to get better it's just been uh just been kind of sick and i'm not for sure why it's not uh it's not going away so we'll just go with the flow right we'll continue to uh take our cold medicine if we can and uh stock up on immune system uh vitamins and whatnot hopefully that uh will kick in here soon and this it's, like, it's just like a cold i got my my nasal uh passages kind of cluttered and and uh you know runny nose and all that stuff just kind of it just won't go away just kind of a little little irritating kind of like a fly on the wall just sitting there right just kind of annoying all right guys have a good night stay safe out there and we will uh we'll chat you another time here peace out